Today we begin a week-long series on medical mysteries with a look at lung cancer. 80% of patients do not survive, but there's enormous progress being made thanks in large part to specific drugs. CBS News correspondent Michelle Gielen reports. Ever since being diagnosed with stage four lung cancer six years ago, Kate Robbins has been in the fight of her life. You become aware of how precious each day is and also how fortunate you are to be one of the lucky ones that is surviving. Sig Adler wasn't as lucky and died of lung cancer last November, just eight months after his diagnosis. His wife Janice remembers his courageous struggle. They took some pictures and the pictures showed that he had stage four lung cancer and that it had metastasized in his bone and in his brain. Two people, two different outcomes. Kate's cancer diagnosis came after she complained of serious headaches. Doctors found she had a brain tumor which had spread from her lung. But when tumors showed up in her liver, doctors didn't give her much hope. The message I got is make your plans, get your life in order, and enjoy the next few months. And I was enraged. Kate was determined to keep fighting and doctors enrolled her in a clinical trial for a targeted therapy that prevents cancer cells from growing. Immediately she had a stunning response. That's no longer visible after just a few months. The tumor started to disappear. I frankly felt that it was a miracle. The mystery was why. Why was it happening for Kate? So doctors at Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center in Boston started investigating. What they found was Kate's cancer cells had a rare mutation. The new drug was able to target that mutation and kill the cancer cells. It was one of the first examples in cancer where we really understood what makes the cancer tick and at the same point how to turn it off. Doctors soon started testing other newly diagnosed lung cancer patients like Greg Vretos to see if they had the same type of mutation. Greg did and doctors immediately enrolled him in a similar clinical trial. The tumors went away really quickly and to a point where they're, they're really not visible in the CAT scans um, or very faintly. <laughs> Four years after his diagnosis of lung cancer, Greg is still going strong. Sig Adler was never tested for that rare mutation. Now his wife Janice is helping raise funds for cancer research in her husband's name. A lung cancer in my husband is totally different from a lung cancer in the person standing next to him. So a drug that can work on someone like Kate, it's wonderful. I feel amazing blessed that I can give people out there hope. For The Early Show, Michelle Gielen, CBS News, New York. We're joined now by Dr. Thomas Lynch. He is Chief Oncologist at Massachusetts General Hospital Center in Boston. Good morning to you. Good morning. I know that you treated both Kate and Greg, and the reason they're alive today is because you got the right drug for the right patient. And, and, and Maggie, that's absolutely essential. And that's really something that we're understanding is critical to success in cancer, is getting the right drug to the right patient. If you hadn't discovered this mutation, you wouldn't know that that drug would work for them. So my question is, how do we discover if we have these mutations? Well, one of the great things that's happening now is with our better understanding of genetics, of understanding what drives cancers, we're able to look and we're able to profile patients across a broad number of genetic changes. And that's really what's different about cancer therapy now. I think it's highly likely that when a patient goes to see their doctor in two, three years, they'll have 40, 50, 60 genes analyzed and we will select the right drug based on what that genetic profile tells us. It's happening now and it really has potential to change therapy in the future. So th it's not just lung cancer, there are other forms of cancer that are already being treated by these targeted drugs? Exactly. We're beginning to expand this. So probably the best example to start with was breast cancer. We learned in breast cancer that if you were a woman that had, uh, had a presence of something called the estrogen receptor, that a targeted drug for that would make a big difference. And now there's a number of different cancers. It's still early, we're still learning which ones the these drugs to combine, but this offers extraordinary hope for patients. Real quick, so if you go to the doctor as a cancer patient, should your first question be, will you test my genes? I think the first question should be, 
can you look for these genes in my cancer? Uh, can you take my specimen, send it to the molecular profiling lab, and have them look for these specific genetic changes? Much of this is still being done in clinical trials, so I think it's still, it's still early in the evolution of this process, but it offers extraordinary hope. All right, Dr. Thomas Lynch, thank you. Thank you.